Um, Mother Barnes is on, and she uh, should be ready to give you uh, a song. And right. if, uh, if by that Did point in time, if, <laughs> if, uh, if Reverend Faith is not on, uh, I will I will do the prayer. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. I don't know my song I found. Oh, my. Well, come on, you can get started. We're going to go open up this morning. Each, to each and every one, we're glad to be here one more time. And like I said, I know it's Sunday and time changing. Everybody might got the time a uh, little crossed up to them, but doing thanks to the good Lord, we're going to go on and do what the Lord has asked us to do. We're going to go and open up for Sunday school this morning. Ask Mother Barnum give us a song. I know if we're facing on, we get her to do a prayer. And I think my, uh, Mr. Howard is on for the minutes this morning. Yes. Okay. Well, Mother Bob, whenever you're ready, we'll get started. Jesus, keep me near the cross as a precious fountain free to Through their ministry. 
But then some of the men who had been Pharisees before their conversion stood up and said, all Gentile converts must be circumcised and required to follow all the Jewish customs and ceremonies. So the apostles and church elders set a further meeting to decide this question. And after much discussion and argument, uh, Peter stood up and said, he said, now look, brothers, you all know that God chose me from among you long ago to preach to the, to preach the good news to the Gentiles so that they also can be, could believe. And then he said, God who knows men's heart confirmed the fact that the, that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he gave to us. He made no difference between them and us, for he cleansed their lives through the faith just as he did ours. And then he said, so now why are you tempting God by putting a yoke on the disciples' neck? A yoke that we, nor our ancestors, could bear. And then the last verse he said, We believe that all are saved the same way, by the, the free gift of the Lord Jesus. We believe we will be saved through the grace just like them. And as we look at this lesson here, you know, sometimes... Just when you think you, 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 know, you feel comfortable with things, you're finally getting it all together. Satan comes along and destroys. And that's the way it was with Paul. As he had taught the people about the requirements for salvation, some men came from Judea and told them they must obey the law. Now, the, problem was, the, the sad thing about it, the new converts were caught in the middle. And with their salvation at stake. They, they, you know, didn't know which to go. Paul had done all this teaching to them about the requirements of salvation. Then these people come down from Judea, and they're teaching them the opposite. And they must have been very confused. And, and we, had, we have to be mindful how we do things. And sometimes, sometimes our, our members or our church, we, we be arguing over nothing no more than like the color of the carpet and and, and we can have an argument and then the new coverage gets confused and some even stop coming they don't know what to believe so this is what had these people in limbo paul had done the teaching paul peter Barnabas, and they said that um all it takes is faith in jesus christ but no, these Judaizers, these people that came out from Judea, and the Judaizers were the early converts to Christianity, who, but they tried to force believers from non-Jewish background to adopt the Jewish custom as a condition of salvation. And then they wanted the people to feel like they had to do what they said in order to be saved. But uh, Peter and Paul and Barnabas had taught them the believing on God, trusting in God, that's how you get salvation. The law can do it, but it cannot save you. But Peter said to the Judaizers, said, I don't understand why you want to heap this law upon others when you can't bear it yourself. You violated God's commandment, which says we must love God with all our heart, souls, mind, and strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. But see, God wants us to show love to everyone despite our differences. And, and once, he put, uh, our, once we put our trust in God and join the family of God, we're no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. And see, so many times, it, it takes, um, God has different people to do different jobs. And he can go over there and get somebody from China for one thing, somebody from Russia for somewhere else, somebody from somewhere else, and then next thing you know, god got a little family. And But the thing about it is, God can take the people, the least one that you respect, and, and he can set them 
him up high. He can take the one that's up high and bring him on down. So this is what you don't know. You trust in God because you don't know what God is going to do. And and God gets people from here, there, everywhere and make him a family. And so we may be different, but look at us. We can we can go head on and, and we can make a family. We can get along together because we all focus on God. That's the thing about it. No matter who you are or where you're from, but if you focus on God and you meet another person that's focused on God, the spirit is going to connect. And so this is what this is what God was after. He wanted us to get the heart right. And he was telling the, the, those men from from Judea said, well, "Why you won't now?" Say you can't keep the law. Our ancestor couldn't keep the law, but yet you want that put that yoke around the neck of other people. And so, how are they supposed to how are they supposed to deal with it? We couldn't do it, but yet you think they expect them to deal with it. And they were, you know, they they used the law for their own convenience. And that's, that's a sad thing, because these people, the new converts, they were hungry for God. And as Peter preached to the Gentiles, the good news, they were right there. They, they wanted to, they wanted to make sure that, uh, um, that they were in charge of everything. And they wanted to change the whole church. They wanted everybody to say, unless you be circumcised, you can't be saved. Unless you keep the laws, the Mosaic law, you can't be saved. That was not what the um, the Lord wanted them to do. And and Paul and Peter and Barnabas, they knew that. They knew that trusting in God was going to be the only thing that would save them. They knew about the rules, I mean, and all that, but they they knew enough to know that, hey, you can keep all the laws you want to, or you can try to keep all of them. Because the thing about it is, if you just made one little slip, it was just like you had to start all over again. I and and that, was, that was not what Paul wanted. See, he, uh, the the the, just, the Judaizers, they didn't care. They just burdened the people with this law, with that law. Law, they weren't even keeping the same. And so that's what that's what they wanted to do. But uh, Paul, and the argument was that, no. Because they had accepted, on their way, they had accepted the people. They had prayed for people, and God had worked miracles in these cities, and, and they had brought people into the congregation that had not been circumcised. And they didn't use that as a requirement. But yet, these people that came down from Judea, they wanted to say that, uh-uh, you got, that's wrong. That's not going to work because everybody's supposed to be circumcised. Everybody's supposed to keep the mosaic law. And, and that, that's no good what you've done. But the, uh, Paul, Peter, and Barnabas knew God wanted the heart. He wanted his heart to be circumcised, not necessarily the body. And he knew that if the heart was circumcised, they would trust in the Lord. And so he said, uh, no. Uh, that that's not the way. And that was what the argument was. And they had to take it to Jerusalem to the to the council and let them decide. And the, the council decided that, no, that wasn't necessary. And uh, But God loves everybody. He wants us to show love. And, and he wants all of his, everybody, to be a big family all over the world. And... Uh, and see, in the first century, the Jews, Jews stuck with the Jews. The Greeks stuck with the Greeks. The rich and the poor never mingled. And yet, when we read Romans 16, 1 through 16, Paul could describe the church in Rome, including Priscilla and Aquila. They were Jews. Uh, Epinetus was a Greek person. Phoebe was a wealthy person. And Philippus was a slave. And what brought all these people together and such different people together? It was Jesus. And so he said, <clears throat> when, you know, when we only prefer our kind of people, society can, it, it can kind of fracture and come break and come apart 
Allah'ın kudurkuları en ekranlarından. And and the Lord said, you know, if we're only good to the ones that we, how if we only good because to the ones that are good to us, and we only want to speak with them, then we, what do we accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. You got to get outside the box, these things. You, you just, you know, just to do your kind, you ain't done nothing. And, and, and we, you know, when we only prefer our kind of people, like I said, society gets shaky, society fractures along these lines, and then we have a lot more problems. You know, it's natural to want to live, work, and go to church with people like us. But Jesus pushes us beyond that in a world breaking away along various lines. He's making us a people who are different together, united in him as one family. See, the thing about it, when, uh, um, when God <laughs> put us together, God has people coming from different backgrounds, different religious background, different economic background, different racial and ethnic group. And, and when we got all those people, God got all those people. When one of them, but when we got our focus on Jesus, when we trust in the Lord, and, and, and we make one family out of different people. So he said, he says, um, <clears throat> he, when he unites us, he's got his family. We can make his family, and we coming from different backgrounds, and we come from different religious backgrounds. We, we are different people, but when God unites us, we are one family. And that's what the deal, that's what God was telling them, that's what Paul and Barnabas and Peter was trying to tell them. We are going to be one family. In the end, when God comes back for his church, it may be made up the red man, the black man, the, the, the green man, or whatever. But they're going to be made up of different. And, but God has got one family. He's coming back for his one family. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to we need to think about that. Uh, when you see someone that's different, when you see someone that's different, you need to think about the fact that no matter what, we all belong to God. We all belong to God. And we just, we got to think about it. God made us, so he made us like he wanted us. And, and we're all, we all belong to him. And, and we're all serving him. And so you got, you think about the fact that, well, they look, they different from me. They came from this kind of religious group. And see, there's no one religious group that's going to be guaranteed a place in heaven. Those who trust in the Lord and those who know, who, who know God and serve him all the days of their lives, they're going to be the ones that's going to heaven. It doesn't make any difference whether you Baptist, missionary Baptist, primitive Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, uh, or Episcopalian, or whatever. It doesn't make any difference. If you focus on God, if your heart is right with God, it doesn't matter what denomination come out. You you learn and you know the Lord. And, and so, you know, a God's family could be made up of all kinds of people, from religious background and, and to your know, racial background. Those who trust in the Lord will not be disappointed. And that's what we have to do. And so, you know, when you think about that, you say, well, um, we know uh, <clears throat> when you when when you think about how God is going to have one big family, He's coming back for a church, and that church might include one or two people from Africa, one or two people from England, any place. But God made us different together. That's what that's the idea. And you see, mature Christians. They grown be not beyond that denomination still, facing one religious practice over another. <clears throat> but you know, no matter how we, how good it looks on the outside, but what is in your heart? God is after the heart. He wants to know if we do we know how to treat people. Do we know how to 
speak to those who are different than us. And sometimes, if you notice, people still do that a lot. They're, they're, sometimes they come to church, they only sit with that group. And if they go out somewhere, they only want to be with that group. But Jesus said, we ain't done nothing. We need to enlarge our vision. And think about some the people that maybe the ones that need us are the ones that sometimes we might shun. They need us the most. And they're seeking, they're, some of them are trying to get it together. And they need the help of those who are considered mature Christians. <laughs> so this is what God is saying to us. And he said, you know, the mature Christians, they, they look beyond that denomination stuff. Uh, they look beyond the, a lot of economic stuff. There are those who drive certain vehicles and, and somebody wants a vehicle just like that. They are, and they want to be with that group. And that group uh, sit together, even in the house of God. Sometimes, when, and then when the service are with, they're gone because they do not have any interest in anybody else. That's not the way that God wants us to be. God wants us to reach out and be friendly and speak to all people. Sometimes a person is burdened down and they just won't. If somebody comes up to them and say, how are you doing? We thank you for coming. We hope you enjoy and hope you will come again. And that's what, that's what God wants us to do. But, you know, we have to be careful how we live around these people. Paul and Barnabas and Peter, they had preached and they had done a lot. But yet, all it took was these, these men coming down from Judea, and, and they just stirred everything up. Ended up having to have a knockdown and a drag out session. So th- that is not what God wants. And, and the, um, the mature Christians should only be concerned that how we how we live is satisfactory in the eyes of the Lord. Are there any comments? Yes. I want to thank God and thank God for letting you do teach this awesome lesson. And like you said, God wants everybody. God has everybody on the same accord. He feeds us all out the same spoon. And God is about Love. He ain't about this stuff. Don't you speak to this person. Don't you speak to that person. He loves us all. He treats us all the same. And that's where he wants us to be because he is all about love. Yeah. Uh huh. And he just realized keep your focus on him. That's right. And. Oh, God, you won't have it on the bad things. Because we might be sneaking with some stuff we do, but God sees it all, he hears it all, and he knows it all. So ain't no need to try to hide nothing or sugarcoat nothing, because he's seen it all. He knows what you like. He manages. He knows what you're going to do and what you won't do. Yeah. And he, he knows your heart. That's the truth right. about it. If God That's got your heart, then he got it all. That's right. Even if you speak something more gently and don't mean it, he knows that. So it's better to speak harsh and be truthful and sincere than to try to sugarcoat because he knows that too, that you're not sincere. Right. So Just I no matter what you do, you can't get around God. No, you can't. Right. And because you don't like a person, you don't to try to tell somebody else don't like that person because you don't like them. If that person hasn't done anything to you, you don't have any reason not to like them. And to him, God says we must forgive them and move on. There you go. That's right. And, I, and summary, this lesson says to me that Salvation is free. It can't be bought. It's a gift from God. And that's the come as you are. Sometimes we get that part confused, I think. That's the come as you are that he's talking about. Accept salvation and your charges are dropped. Immediately mm-hmm. by God. That's the come as you are. 
And we all uh, have that opportunity to do just that. Mm -hmm. That's right. And also on on page um, 36, in that second um, paragraph, it was something that kind of stood out. Uh, It says, modern Christians act as gatekeepers to Christianity and attempt to limit who God can save. But God freely gives salvation. That's saying that we we can't determine or or say who God is going to save or who he's going to bless or who he's going to do whatever he's going to do for. It's up to God. We we cannot sit in judgment of other people uh, because that's God's place. And then on page 37 it says, you do not need to have a record of good deeds outnumber bad deeds. Salvation is not based on anything except God's grace. And grace is simply the reception of a gift that is undeserved. All of us don't deserve, none of us deserve the grace that God has given us. So we should not be try to be good keepers to keep other folks in and some some folks in and some folks out. That's up to God. But um but it says here that I'll be here. God is how we show our gratitude for what he has done for us, us as individuals. And we are thankful that vengeance is mine, said the Lord. You know, you don't have to answer to Ella <laughs> or your pastor or your deacons, but you do answer to God. That's right. That's right. right. That is right. And you Get around it. You will answer to God. Any other comments? I enjoyed the lesson. I enjoyed the lesson too, trustee. I was kind of late coming in this morning, but I enjoyed the lesson too. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that you did. And you know, we as we go through life, we think about we're going to have some trials and we're going to have some tribulation because he said we would. If we want to follow him, we're going to have to deal with a whole lot of things. But the thing about it, when you start learning, when you start to look at reading the word of God, obeying the word of God, and looking at it, you know, you think about, you start to grow in Christ. Then you understand a lot of things. You say, I didn't realize that. That was wrong. I didn't realize that. And you start asking the Lord to forgive you. And, and you tell him that uh, 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 create a, in you a, a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you. Because see, sometimes people will have bad spirits and just as soon as you can feel it just as soon as you're in their presence. But we want to be, God want his people to, to be to a point you come in, you bring the spirit of Christ with you. Yeah. And let it follow you. Then when you're in someone's presence, you know, and uh, everything is lovely. You can have a lovely meeting. You can have a, a, a lovely church service. Or you can just meet someone on the street and y'all can have a lovely conversation. Because you're focused on God. You're looking, you're both looking toward it the same way. And that's yeah. what he wants us to do. Yeah. And, and also, God is love. He all about love. And that's what he trying to teach us. He want us to love each other like he loves us. Yeah, he does. And, and, and you know, and, and we, we just all look at ourselves, take inventory. So now, just look in what the best we can see in our heart. Take inventory so now. Was I right on that account? Did I do that or should I do that? As you read and study the Word of God, you, you learn that a lot of things you thought was okay, it wasn't. But God kept you here. He forgave you and He kept you here so that you would have time to get it right. That's right, because you know what, sitting there. Oh, I started reading the Bible and stuff, and like we were working, some people took all our money and stuff, and I was so upset with them people, I didn't know what to do. So I started reading the Bible, and then I looked in there, I saw, I used to hate those people, and I looked in there and saw what God said, 
he didn't have no respect for Persia. That made me come to my senses. He owned the world and everything in it belonged to him. So that made me think he got it all. I have nothing. So I got to get down to my level and do the right thing. So I had to ask God to forgive me for hating those people, for taking everything we worked for. I said, because he owns everything. He ain't got no respect for us. I don't have anything. So I can't, I can't dislike nobody or hate nobody. That's right. That's right. Thank him, and I thank him to wrap the day that been years ago. I thank God for changing me. Uh-huh. You see, when you come to know the Lord, and the Lord comes and reign in your heart, and, and he, he takes over your life, you follow him, and then you look back at so many things that you saw that you were doing was so wrong, and now you know better. And you're going to do this. Okay. I ain't going to say I cross every eye and dirt every tree now. But if I do something wrong or say something wrong to somebody, cause I will say that at times. But if, they, if it comes to me, then I'll go to that person. If they don't come to me first and tell them, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Because I don't get above my business what I can't say. I'm sorry. Okay. You, God, you, we have to ask God to forgive us. God, you got to think about those people that are bad and those that are bad now. When we were bad, God kept us until we changed. And, and He's right. keeping them. He's giving everybody a chance. That's right. That's, that's why we have to keep ourselves and understand it with God. So when the other people look at us, they think we bad also, but they look at us right, they know that we are following God, talking in God's footsteps. And you, you, the way you act, the way you treat people and all that. That's, That's right. right. Our job never ends until the day we breathe that last breath of life. That's right. You're on the battlefield every day. Every That's day. Right. Every That's day. Right. It's, a, it's another chance for you to get it right if you haven't already got it right. Yeah. That's right. 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 You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning, and 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 I see people quoting scriptures and doing all kinds of things all the time, and um, I hear the word judge a lot, um, but we talk about God as love because I talk about things and you get offended. It's not because I don't love you. We talk about holding each other accountable, and I think. Um, the word um, is given to certain folk to say certain things at a certain time. And if you can't receive it, I tell people all the time, I say things. I have no control over how people receive it. I say it and move on. Um, but I just, a, a lot of times when I hear people talk about judging. It ain't to me judging. It's holding folk accountable. And I tell people to hold me accountable. Obviously, if you feel like I'm judging you, then you something ain't right. That that's that's how I see it. And dealing with people and knowing people, not just going off of um my personal feelings, because um I always say if um if you're not true to yourself, you can't be true to others. And like you say, when we get it wrong and you don't get it right, then that's the issue. Now, I commend us for yesterday. We had a great meeting on yesterday. And I wanted to say it on the end, but I want to say it now. I want everybody to hear it. We had a great meeting yesterday. It went very well. And that's how it ought to be. We, 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 we say things. It might offend you. But shake it off and think about God is love as you talk about. You quote all these scriptures. Then put it to use. 
And that's how we um, get to where we need to get. We talk about what the young folk are doing, but what are we doing as adults? How can we talk about what the kids are doing when we don't even come come together? So when we when we learn better, and like uh, our Mother Frances said, uh, growing up, she saw things one way. Well, see, some folks still seeing things the same way instead of uh, 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 changing their mindset. When you get older, you know better, you learn better, then you're supposed to do better. And stop thinking just because people say things, it's all about you. It's about love. Let's let's, let's start living what we're saying. I ain't there yet, but I'm going to tell you now, uh, it bothers me, us as the black community, we, we come a long ways, but we still got a long ways to go because there's a lot of stuff going on that just ain't right. And we got to get it together. And we got to talk about it. Conversation. You can't get in the well uh -huh. unless we have a conversation. And if you don't want to have the conversation, then that's a problem. But I'm going to shut it down. I know we got to go, got to move forward. But I thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank all of you for your support. Thank you, Butch. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if there, are, there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. It's nasty for the awesome lesson. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Aunt Nancy, and all for that beautiful lesson. It just helped me to be able to see that we need to be more kingdom minded people. We're working for a greater cause and the vision. It's, it's to be in the sight of God, not in our sight. Nothing that we want as I, for ourselves, but for, for the kingdom of God. We are kingdom-minded people. We can live that way in everything we do. And that's, that's what I learned from this lesson today. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If not, this concludes our Sunday school lesson. Thank you, uh, Trustee Wu, for this lesson this morning. Now, I just want to ask from either church or anyone what did we really learn from the lesson today? We all need to learn to love one another as God will have us to love one another, because God is about love. He's all about love. He gave his only begotten son for us sinners. So we got to get together and love one another as he will have us to do. And God already knows what's in your heart. So you better get right. All right. Yeah. And love one another, and God will have us. All right. Now, if no one else will stick on our secretary this morning. Uh, to Minutes of the Embassy Chapel Missionary Baptist Church and St. Stephen on the fifth day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. Google call to order um, by Deacon Rick at 9.50, opening of our mother bar, prayer by Pastor Lewis. Our um, scripture today comes from Acts 15, 1 through 11. Our topic, enlarging our vision. Um, the lesson was reviewed for 34 minutes by Trustee Wooden. Closing remarks were made by Mother Dupree. All your officers remain the same. Thank you for the minutes this morning. Are there any corrections of the minutes on this morning? If we will receive the minutes that have been read on today. And we're just going to close out with the word this morning. Amen. Because we're going right back into the service this morning. But we're going to just say amen. 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 And we'll turn, turn, turn it over to Reverend Lewis this morning. The recording has started. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we are delighted that everyone was who have joined us in with Sunday School. I know that we had uh, 20 people from uh, 
Kathleen Coppers called that was joined in, and I know plus uh, those that joined in through Brother Dancy Feed. So we're delighted and thankful this morning that you have joined us. We are, uh, uh, we are disappointed that uh, we are not in the house this morning inside Anderson Chapel to celebrate our 120th anniversary year. But nevertheless, we are in the virtual house this morning. We have come together to hear a word from the Lord. Um, we may not have the choir that we're scheduled to be singing, but we will come together on one accord. We just heard him say that when when we when we come together, we we don't come for a man, we don't come for the preacher, we don't come for the deacon, we come for God Almighty. We come because for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have life everlasting. So we are here this morning, and we are delighted. Um, just before we do proceed with the program uh, this morning, and because we're in the virtual house, I was looking down, uh, trying to see who may be who may be on that I could call to sing on this morning. But uh, is there anyone in our midst who would like?